Welcome back. Uh, welcome back to another um, presentation of um, um, QTP learning series from um, trainingright.com. Uh, in our previous videos, uh, we were looking at uh, uh, writing some VB script. And uh, we started with um, declaring variables as how we could declare variables uh, using DIM. And then we talked about uh, uh, using option explicit because uh, without option explicit, there's a possibility that you might make some mistakes. Uh, um, you know, spelling mistakes and uh, your, your program would not uh, uh, run into what is called a compile error, but it would run into a logical error. And I have demonstrated all that in my previous videos. If you have not watched that, I um, strongly uh, suggest uh, and recommend you to go back and then watch those uh, videos uh, where we have justified the need of uh, utilizing what is called option explicit, which is uh, making sure that it's going to come back and then help us uh, a write uh, a code which is not error prone um, because again um, without option option explicit we could be writing some code which might not fail during a compile time it would compile uh, but um, it would not give you the desired uh, output because uh, we have made some mistakes so that was uh, uh, the reasoning behind including option explicit uh, then we talked about um, uh, using what is called uh, the print statement, uh, we printed uh, in 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 our program. We said um, you know the income calculator program. We said okay, the spouse uh, makes X amount of dollars, you make X X amount of dollars, and then we want to calculate what is the total per week. And then we went ahead and then we wrote uh, what is called a for loop, which um, which took into consideration how much we earn like every week, uh, and uh, it gave you. Uh, a series of outputs uh, depending on the range which we have given here. We started with 52 weeks, which was one year. Then we extended that to 104 weeks. And then uh, every week it would go ahead and then calculate like how much you make for that week. Uh, and um, um, in fact, by that week. And um, uh, after that, uh, we we also inserted what is called an if statement where we check that, okay, if there is certain condition is true, and the condition is, let's say, if we have worked for 52 weeks, that is like one year. We, we just wanted to congratulate ourselves uh, for working there for, for a year. So I said if I equals 52, if the count had reached to 52, then we would we would do certain things. So for that, uh, since it, it is a state, uh, it, it is a condition, so we have to use what is called an if statement. So if uh, the condition is true, which is I, which was the count for the number of weeks, and if that uh, happens to be 52, then we wanted to say that, okay, we are happy that we worked for one year, and then we wanted to show like how much we have made by the time. And then we continued uh, going into this loop, uh, and we said, okay, if we reached to the second year mark, which was like 104 weeks, we would, uh, again, stop there and then say something that we are happy that we worked for two years. Okay, that's what we did with the for loop. We did, uh, we, we use if statements, uh, and then uh, we also introduce ourselves to what is called uh, um, the built-in functions. Uh, now, for that, I started with the input box, and in the input box, I captured um, from the user, I captured like, what is my salary? So um, rather than hard coding that value and uh, being predictable with our results all the time, we just wanted to be, uh, our program to be a little powerful in the sense that it would uh, calculate uh, and give us our incomes based on what we input. So we said uh, my salary per week is 300 and change and then uh, spouse is some other number and change. And then we saw uh, that it kind of like it failed here because it was uh, not adding this operator no longer performed as an additional operator as in plus, but rather it concatenated. So I explained you the reasons why it concatenated. The reason it, it got concatenating these two values was because of what was coming out from the input box was like a string. So that gave us the reason for us to convert whatever was coming out using what is called, uh, uh, you know, built-in functions. Uh, so I explained you about the built-in functions like C int, C double. So it is like a convert to integer, convert to double. So we went with... Uh, C int first, and I give you the example of C int where I put like a, a, a whole number without the decimal. But once I started putting the decimal, you, you notice that it started um, to truncate the decimal part of it, and uh, the results were not accurate because uh, it would just ignore the, the decimals. So what we did is uh, we, we saw the need for uh, using another function, which is called convert to a double. 
and double is something which will consider the uh, decimal part of it. So we tried with the double now. We, we change it to double. And uh, so it retained the decimal part. So it went into this, it went into that. And then after we do both, we added the total and then we put the total into that. Um, now, you also have to consider the fact that uh, uh, when, when you are adding the total, uh, you know, what kind of data types you have. So this is double, this is double. So it is going to add that. Um, if this is string, this is string, it is going to concatenate that. Okay, then we introduce ourselves to, we wanted to find out like whether it was adding right or not. So we wanted to quickly see the, the result of that. For that, we use what is called a message box. Message box, again, is a built-in function of VBScript, which is going to take this as as the argument and then it'll spit out it will display to you uh, whatever you want it to display so in the my message box I wanted to display the total so that I could see that yes that's that's uh, the total we were looking for okay so far so good uh, we've been doing all right so th this is what we have learned in our um, you know VB script learning series today I'm gonna take it to um, you know the the next level which is I'm going to introduce you to what is called functions um, I'll talk about how to create functions and how to uh, call those functions okay now in this in this scenario uh, in in this program what we are doing is uh, we are um, entering the information that goes into this variable enter spouse and salary that goes into this variable and then we add that together put it into the third variable and then we display like you know in the message box what it is and then after that we do a loop and then we do a loop and in the loop once we hit 52 weeks we say that okay happy that we work for one year once we hit 104 weeks we say that happy we we work for two years then after that we said that okay together um, we made a total of that and after we finish that I am also printing two more lines right here. Take a look. I'm printing two more lines. What I'm doing is I'm saying print uh, every week together we make uh, and thankful that we both have jobs in this economy uh, and our annual income is whatever our, our annual income is. So these two lines uh, um, I am I am printing at the end. Right. So what I want to do is. Uh, uh, I want to show you as how to write a function and how we can, um, you know, put uh, things into that function. So what I will be doing is I'll be writing a function like, uh, say, um, you know, something like, uh, um, you know, print out, uh, uh, you know, message or something. So uh, and then I'll put these two lines into that. OK, so to create a function, I will just type the word function. When I type the word function and hit um, um, enter, um, it should technically uh, give me a uh, function and end function. So let's say oh, I'm running it. Okay. End uh, function. Okay. And um, in this function, I'm going to give it a name, right? Uh, here it is. Uh, uh, I don't know what had happened to the compiler at that time. Sometimes uh, QTP kind of like um, acts up a little bit. Okay, um, so here is the function, uh, and uh, uh, I will give it the name of the function. The name of the function is, let's say, I'm going to call the name of the function as uh, uh, print uh, message, print message, right? And uh, the too many n functions. Okay, function. Uh, give the name of the function and then uh, end function and in this this is a function now right okay now when you create a function there there are there is a meaning sometimes you put this this and sometimes you don't put that right so we'll come to what is the meaning of that for now we, we just want to see that this function print message is it working or not so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two lines um and i'm going to cut them and put them here and just say that uh uh you know here i'm gonna add one more line and say so that we know that uh, uh this is coming from inside the function let's say so that's that's some message which we are printing okay okay so this is this this function uh has got some print statements 
Now, if I run it, nothing is going to work. This function will, will, will not get executed because I, I did not call it, right? So let's see how, how it goes, and then we'll see as how to call that function. So I'm going to run this. Uh, and uh, this, again, according to our program, it is asking me, what is my salary? So I'm just going to say 300. What is my spouse salary? I'm going to say 400 and hit enter. And then it is going to come back and say that the total is, uh, this is from that message box, like 700. And it is doing its uh, looping in here. As you can see quickly that like all this, it is going to check for like 104 weeks. And uh, then it did whatever it did. So if you see, um in, in the the things inside the function where this is coming from inside the function every week we make blah 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 right so now let's see if these print uh, statements uh, ever got executed um for that i have to uh take a look into this print window and see if it was done so let me see uh so this is all which is coming inside the for loop together we made by week 76 and 104 and we are happy that we worked for two full year and together we made um by week 104 uh you know whatever we make so that was my last one like together we made by the week of that was my last one so if you if you see that is still inside this for loop that is still inside this Together we made by week that, right? That was a, so this thing never got executed. So a function, whatever you put inside a function will never get executed unless you call that function. All right. Okay. There are, there are ways to call that function depending on what kind of function it is. Right now, this, this function is not returning anything, meaning that we are not doing any calculation inside it and then we are not returning anything. So we just we just want to call this function. So the way I'm going to call this function is by the name of the function. So what is the name of the function? The name of the function is a print uh, message. So I'm going to call the name of the function, right? Um, now, it doesn't matter where the function is. The function could be, um, you know, all the way down in the code or wherever. So when you call, it gets executed. It will call the function. It will go to the function and execute whatever is there inside the function. So here I'm calling the function now. Before I had... I had created the function, but I never called the function. That's why none of the lines got executed in the function. Right now, okay, the function is created. Now I'm calling the function. Now let's see if, if this gets executed. If it gets executed, I should be seeing this is coming from inside the function. And uh, I should also see every week together we make blah, blah, blah. And uh, I should also see our annual income is whatever, right? Okay, now let's see. If I'm running it, uh, box pops up. It is asking me for my salary. Uh, I say 400, spouse is uh, 400. Uh, together we make 800. Now it is going to run run this loop. And quickly, if you see that, right, all of these, uh, it's, it's going to run that. And after it run that, uh, after it ran, it, it is uh, giving me some output. And if you see, the last three lines came up, right? So this is like, this is coming from inside the function. Every week, uh, week we uh, together we make eight, 800. Thankful that we have. So that is coming. So now what had happened? We have seen as how to create a function, how to create a function. And we ran the code without calling that function. That's why these the function never got executed. Then I ran by typing the name of the function that was like calling that function and the function got executed. Okay, in our next video, I will be showing you the different types of function. The functions, um, some of the functions, they can take arguments, right, or parameters. We should be passing parameters to a function. When you pass parameters to that function, how do you do that? And when it gets executed, uh, how do you get a value out of the function back into, into my code or into my script, right? How do we do that? So that's what I'll be showing you in my next video. Um, until then, I want you to keep practicing. Um, if you uh, have not joined my course, um, I uh, recommend that you take a look into uh, our website, which is uh, tradingright.com. There's so many, um, you know, free videos for you to, uh, you know, go and watch. Uh, I have a tons of videos on youtube.com, and you could also be looking into some of the videos uh, which we have on, on our site. Uh, so, um, Till we have the other video coming out, um, you know, sit tight, relax, uh, enjoy, and uh, we'll be seeing you shortly with another video. Um, until then, take care.